Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about the Eolum. It's a six meter long snake-like robot that inspects and monitors pipelines under the ocean. Be strong. Be strong. That's right, Ryan, and while we already have drone submarines for this work, the Elooms is the first to have an underwater docking station. This docking station can be installed up to 500 meters deep, which the Elum will call home for up to six months. It will recharge its battery and swap out parts for different tasks, all in one convenient underwater location. Riley, the way I understand it is this robot will add and remove pieces as needed to fit the job. Is that correct? That is correct. And there is essentially a hinge between each section that allows the robot to contort into special shapes to work in confined spaces. That's really cool. It could wrap itself around a pipeline to then like get a really up close and personal look at a crack on a pipe. But this is gonna be used for monitoring. Uh, how, how do we currently monitor our undersea pipelines? The answer is not very well, Ryan. We currently use drones that typically need to be transported to offshore sites on a fully crewed ship. This can cost up to $100,000 per day. Holy crap, no wonder we keep on having oil leaks. It sounds like it's more expensive to monitor the pipelines than to repair breaks or pay the government fines. And the current monitoring is dependent on the ocean's surface condition. Jesus, so on top of the insane price, you also got to worry about the weather. I didn't even think of that. Monitoring these pipelines sounds like a massive job. That's why oil companies are so excited for the next generation of autonomous undersea drones. Oh yeah, I mean, not only will it drastically reduce the cost of monitoring, which seems almost excessive to the point they can't even do it right now, but it should also cut down on repairs and maintenance because they'll be able to catch things early. Eliminating underwater leaks will have a tremendous monetary value, but it will also greatly reduce environmental impacts. Think of all the happy little sea creatures just swimming around in oil-free water. This will certainly help smaller pipelines, but how realistic is it for larger ones? Well, I got to think about two things. First, the largest pipeline is approximately 1,224 kilometers long. That's a pretty freaking long pipeline. The second thing is our producer left out one vital piece of information that he didn't tell us until right now, which is the Elum can only travel about 20 kilometers from its docking station before it has to return to recharge. So with that in mind, I don't see how this is remotely feasible for a large pipeline. Maybe a pipeline going across a little ford in the Norwegian fords might be fine, but anything out in blue water <laughs> isn't going to fly or swim. I recognize your thought process on that, Ryan, but I think they may be able to put them closer to, say, an oil platform so that if there are any issues, these robots are able to jump right in and help patch it up rather than waiting over a long period of time with issues building up over and over. That's a good point, Riley, because, you know, pipelines are built on different types of sea bottoms, you know, and a, a bare rock sea bottom will cause a lot more abrasion and movement with the currents and possible damage to the pipeline than a medium soil seabed, which it would kind of rest nicely and kind of like a little mattress. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Leet Life in Real Life. Please make sure you like, subscribe, comment. You know, we keep on saying that, but that's how this channel grows. That's how we keep on going. So if, you enjoy, if you're enjoying it, please do something to show your love. And with that, I'm Ryan. And I'm Riley. And if any of you are looking to find an Elum, you better start looking a thousand leaps under the sea. That's right, Ryan, and while we already have drone submarines for this work,
The Elooms is the first to have an underwater docking station.